G'day guys, it's Adam from Video Show Me How, and in this video, it's gonna be all about Anderson plugs, and more specifically, how you can wire into an Anderson plug correctly so that you can create something a little bit like this so that you can use it in your application of choice. So Anderson plugs, what are they? Well, these are a nice, foolproof way to connect some higher amperage cabling. They are a, a, a system that doesn't allow you to connect wires the wrong way, um, wires going this side like this, like you can see on this, this pre-made one, this has got eyelets for a battery on one side and it's in plug on the other. So the idea is that there's no way that you can connect uh, your cabling the incorrect way once these are built. They have to be put in the right way, so positive, positive, negative, negative. So it's just a nice solid way of connecting cabling. They're very hardy. And, and when these are put together the right way, they essentially, these will never come apart. The best thing is they can carry a lot of amperage, up to 50 amps to run through these connections. And essentially that's what your standard Anderson plug is rated to. So these are super easy to come by online and you can buy all sorts of kits and relatively cheaply as well. This particular kit came with uh, handles as well. So these uh, enable sort of slots in there like that and screws in so it's a bit easier to uh, connect and disconnect. It also has um, dust boots and these sit over the top to protect your uh, pins in there, the actual terminals themselves, partic particularly for things like camper trailer applications or caravan or motorhomes, all that sort of stuff where these might be out in the elements. Now this video is just gonna be a nice, simple, quick video on exactly how to install your cabling in the connectors the right way so that they're not gonna come apart and then also um, how to install your connector into the housing itself. Now the tools that you're gonna need for this job are some wire strippers. We're gonna need a half decent pair of linesman pliers there as well. And ideally you want a crimper like this. Now this is a hydraulic crimper. They can be had online for less than $100 and they're, so they're quite cheap. There's not really a lot to them other than a great big piston up the middle here. This guy here's max pressure is 10 ton, allegedly, but uh, it's it, safe to say does the job. Um, so this is what you're using to crimp, uh, a nice round crimp with the dies, and there's a whole bunch of different dies that come in the kits. Um, but this is what you use to crimp the actual connection themselves onto your wire. So what we're gonna be doing today is just using this wire as a bit of a demo wire and connecting an Anderson plug to either end so that you can see how to actually crimp these on the right way, but then also how you install it into your Anderson plug. Step one is to strip the insulation away from the wire. Now the next step is actually connecting the wires themselves. Now using your pliers to just jam down on, on top of the connection like that won't work. It might feel like it's solid, but then it will come loose. So you really don't want to do that. There really only is two ways of connecting these in a way that is lasting and that does not come loose and provides a really good connection. The other way is called pool soldering. And what effectively that is, is you're sitting this in a vise, you're filling this up with solder, and when it's full to the brim, you are popping the wire in like that, letting it cool to provide a, a fully connected connection that way. There is gonna be a video on the channel shortly, if not already, by the time you're watching this, that uh, gives you a guide on exactly how to do that. Now the way we're gonna be doing it here today, and the better way, in my opinion, is using a, a proper crimping tool. So next step is to grab your crimping tool. Make sure you have the right size dies in there. You wanna make sure it's ready to go. Squish it down until it gets reasonably close here in the jaws to the point where you can drop your connector in, just like this. Now it's really important that when you do pop your connector in that the flat section of this is straight sideways, is horizontal. As you can see, I've got it here. The reason for that is if you're, when you squish this, if any residual goes on either side, um, it won't fit in the housing unless, unless those residual bits are squished out to the side. Then you won't have any problem but if it's the wrong way, it won't, it won't fit in here. So pretty straightforward. Make sure that the way you're squishing it is straight horizontal in the flat plane at the back. Once you've got to that point, we just wanna pop the wire in itself. 
and make sure that's sticking the right way as well. And then you just want to pump like crazy to really start jamming the connection in. And you'll know when it's connect, when it's tight, when you're not going to be able to pull it out. You want to release the vise, pop him up, and there we go. One connected. That's not going anywhere, and that is perfect. So there's the little wings that I was telling you about, so that if uh, you do have those, um, it's really important to make sure that they are horizontal in the same plane as the connection piece itself, so that when you are installing it, there's no problem. From here, it's just a matter of repeating said exercise uh, another three times so that we've got connections on all four ends. A top tip when you are doing these, especially on the second pair, because they are going to be going into the housing at the same spot, you want to make sure that they look the same. So what I mean by that is that you have your plane, this little and the little hook part on the end needs to be the same on both sides so that if you've got one up one way and one up the other, when you go to put these in, which effectively sit in there just like that with the little hook bit that hooks over this little tab. So that slots in there like that. Obviously, if you've got one that way and one sort of the opposite way facing up like, like this or sideways or any of that stuff, you're just gonna be twisting your wire and it's gonna come out like crazy. So when you are doing your second part of the pair, this guy, for example, you wanna make sure that when you do put it in that you line up both connections so that they come out the same. Cool, so once you've got both ends in, now if you find you have a little bit in the excess of these sort of wing bits, these bits here, uh, just like here, this cable is technically not the right size for that die, so it's, it still does the job. These aren't going anywhere, but if you get any of these extra wings, just clamp them down, get your um, pliers here like this, and just give them a bit of a Bit of, bit of a touch up, bit of a squish in. They are only really skinny bits of metal, so it's no big deal to be able to squish them in just like that. The main reason is you won't be able to get it in the housing if you have it like that. It just, it, well, that one actually slightly will. Anyway, give them a quick uh, quick touch up, any of the little tiny little skinny or wafer thin uh, pieces at the edges, just so that they're nice and skinny, just like that, and then you'll have them no problem in getting them in the housing themselves. Cool, so home stretch. The next thing is literally just pushing these connections that you've now made into the housing themselves. Now, I guess the only thing that you need to be careful of is making sure that you get your polarities around the right way. Obviously, uh, plus is a positive and usually a red wire. Uh, negative is the, well, negative, the earth and uh, is usually a black wire. So it's about lining them up. So you wanna make sure that if you can see the lip in there, this needs to slot in that way over the top and it will sit over those. So it really is as simple as just pushing them in um, until you can start seeing it coming out until it clicks just like that. So you can see that the lip there has gone in and over and if you compare the difference between the two, you can see we now have a solid connection with the actual connector itself has sat over the top of the lip here and this little tiny little alloy tab there. So that's effectively how you put them together. So next step is essentially just doing the last three. And that's it, it's as simple as that. They are not going anywhere, solid as. And once you have these together, they are ready to be used, they will click click together just like that, and that's a really great connection that's not gonna go anywhere. Now like we saw earlier, this particular kit came with some handles to pull apart. These are highly recommended. I, I, I definitely recommend you get a kit that has these little T-bar pull aparts, because they, because they are such a positive connection, they can be, I mean, they're not too bad, but they can be a little bit sort of, if your hands are wet, or especially if it's if you're at the beach or something like that, and you're disconnecting your camper trailer or caravan or what have you, you know, a little bit of grip never goes astray. So for the fact that these cost virtually nothing and you can get kits that come with, I'd highly recommend getting some. How these work is they effectively um, screw, ah, 
screw into the housing itself and give you a nice positive grip uh, to pull apart that way. And when you're done, it should look a little like that. So if you have them on, now I've put them on both sides here, you may not necessarily need to do that, but basically, because you really want to disconnect these guys, you really don't want to be pulling on the cable itself. Um, you want to be grabbing either on the side here and using the grip, but it's just handy to have something nice and easy to, to pull on to pull them apart a lot easier. All right, guys, that's as simple as it gets. These are very useful little devices, little uh, connections, and can be used for lots and lots of different applications. I've just installed one of these on my fridge connector because I found that um, the, the cigarette lighter plug was just way too loose and I'd find it sort of half connected or even disconnected uh, if I was on a particularly bumpy track. These guys, however, um, it's gonna be connected in just like this one. Um, once it's in, it's not coming loose and it's gonna give you that permanent power, which is what you're after, particularly for applications like that. So as usual, I hope you found this guide useful, guys. If you enjoyed it and you're keen to support the channel, make sure you hit the subscription button here. There's a couple other videos as well. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.